Hello, and welcome to this week uh, with the uh, Communist Party. Uh, good morning, Revolution, and good morning to you, Scott. Nice hat. Thank you. How's it going? Thank you. Going quite well. Um, like that shirt, very uh, Cuban looking. All you need is a mojito. Ah, uh, if only. Uh, you know, maybe at some point we can integrate cocktails into into this week. But <laughs> I think we'll get in a lot of trouble if we try <laughs> to uh, do that. This is an afternoon's dry. Hope oh, it's not too dry. <laughs> <laughs> In the, you know, uh, in that sense of the uh, word. Well, first, everybody who's watching, please click on the button, start a watch party, share the wealth with your friends. Um, we want to involve everybody in the uh, conversation. Uh, Scott, this week has been a tough, tough week uh, with the um, mass assassinations, the killings in El Paso and uh, and in Dayton. Uh, El Paso are racially motivated. Latinos were killed uh, without discrimination, indiscriminately, gunned down uh, by a mad, crazed, uh, fascist-minded uh, fellow. Um, and uh, then there were the killings in uh, Dayton. Um, and they say that this guy was a left winger, but I don't believe a left wing guy or woman could commit atrocities like that. There must have been something wrong in his thinking. He must have been... Certainly no one that, that you know, shares what we consider the basic commitment of, of the left, which is um, democracy and, and the collective action and empowerment of the, the working class and the people would, would pursue an action like that. That's... In other words, a better life. We want a better life for people, not to kill people. You know, I'm opposed to capital punishment even. I mean, you know, Absolutely. socialism or capitalism. Uh, when's it going to end? What's going to happen? What do we got to do? How far does it got to go before some action? You know, in Ohio, when the governor came to date, uh, uh, Dayton and the people said, do something, do something, do something. What is to be done? I mean, you know, well, that's... I mean, that's, the, the, the lesson of it. It doesn't stop until you know until the people stop it. It's not like you know the 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 extreme right, these these fascist minded and, and militaristic and and ultra nationalist um, forces are going to just you know give up and disband when they reach a certain point. Um, it, they have to be stopped, and that's that's been something that the the Communist Party USA has been saying very consistently for a long time is. You know, it falls to the people to stop the extreme right. Now, but how do we do that? That's the. But the people have expressed in their majority. I think ninety percent, for example, that we 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 want background checks, some form of of gun uh, control, I guess you'd call it. But the NRA is so powerful, and the corporations that produce these weapons, that it goes in one ear and out the other. So um, this endless series of, of deflections, you know, um, the last time around, I think it was, uh, it was bad parenting, right? Parents need to, you know, be firmer with their kids or teach their kids better. And now it's uh, violent video games and movies, um, you know, everything to avoid addressing the real question is, you know, which is how do these um, dangerous criminal terrorists with histories, very public histories of making, you know, white supremacist threats of violence keep ending up with, with assault rifles. Well, you know, I think that that's true. And the uh, problem though is deeper because I think that we have, we're dealing with late stage capitalism, you know, that is in crisis. And, um, and it is, and that crisis has produced a culture of uh, violence, you know, and, uh, and it's organized, you know, it's this, this stuff isn't happening. And, you know, I would, I would maybe put a finer point on that and say, you know, like, 
yes, capitalism, late stage capitalism produces this culture of violence, but in particular, the capitalist class, which actively encourages and profits from, as you said, the, the sale of weapons, um, but also the, the all sorts of, of appeals to violence and especially appeals to, you know, I was thinking about this violent video game thing and I'm not sure it's actually the violence that's, that's problematic. So many video games certainly are extremely violent. They glorify, you know, guns, whatever. But I think the deeper problem is the, the kind of individual of, individualism of them, right? Mm. This, they, they peddle this kind of fiction that the solution to every problem is a very heavily armed individual, right? That, you know, if you have a big enough gun and you're good enough at shooting it, then you can, you can solve all the problems, which is a really, really dangerous, uh, extremely capitalist way of thinking. I would, I would say so. Um, so public sentiment is one thing, but that public sentiment doesn't translate into defeating the advocates of the gun lobby in the House of Representatives, in the Senate, uh, and in the White House. Now, um, so something's amiss somewhere. And, um, and there is, uh, on the one hand, this public sentiment, uh, but on the other hand, there is this strong belief that, you know, in the uh, Second Amendment, um, and um, uh, the belief that we share. Right? We, we communists do not oppose the Second Amendment. We don't oppose gun ownership. I uh, grew up around guns in a family of hunters. Um, so did I. Uh, so, but what's the? So you 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 published an article recently um, on the the notion of community self defense. Um, and is that the solution to racist terror? Um, could you uh, give summarize it for us? It was a it was a really terrific article. Well, first of all, I I want to say that you know this notion that any measure to regulate the sale of firearms is that we're uh, advocating somebody coming in and taking your gun is a whole lot of baloney. It's fakery. It's, it's like crazy. saying that you know having to get a driver's license and register your car is you know. The government—it's a car is a, a heavily regulated piece of property because yeah. they're dangerous, right? So, well, I, I want to disabuse. We don't—we're not buying that. You can take that someplace else. That's a bunch of just total malarkey and uh, baloney and salami and everything else. Now, the other thing is that you know, uh, on the left, the the issue has arisen that in response to this right-wing violence, and this has been out here for some time, it ain't nothing new, that we need, uh, that workers need to arm themselves to, to defend themselves uh, against. Uh, and so, you know, in the first place, the working class is armed, you know? I don't know where I come from. Yeah. You know, everybody's got a Roscoe, you know, everybody's, you know, packing in the home or whatever, you know? So that's, let's set that aside for a moment. The issue though is what is the best way to defeat right-wing extremism, you know? Um, and in my opinion, uh, it is not in, by means of engaging in gun battles with the neo-Nazis and the right wing. It has historically, over and over again, resulted in innocent people getting killed. And people who are involved in these things for good reasons, getting set up by agent provocateurs, FBI, police, you know, uh, entrapped into all kinds of, and uh, that's how they destroyed the uh, Black Panther Party. Yep. You know? it was, I, I was reading recently that it was um, an FBI informant who first uh, was the, the one to, to push really hard for, you know, a, a heavy, like an armed presence of the, 
of the Panthers in the community. And so, you know, and, and then they pitted one group against another. There were in Los Angeles, there was a group called the Karingas, Mayalana Karingas group called the US. And they got into a gun battle with the Pan. They were pitting, you know, yeah. different. And, um, and, and so it's, it's just a bad move, you know, and- Here's the other side of it. Like people, I think, look to, again, they, they, they have this, this kind of fetishistic faith in, in firepower. Like if you just have enough of it, then you can fight your way out of the trap or, or whatever. But the, even, even if we were to imagine armed community self-defense, um, the precondition for that is collective organization and solidarity and, and building a, a network of people. And right now, I have the suspicion that a lot of the time on, on the left, you know, this appeal to arming, arming ourselves or whatever is, is the easy way out. It's to not, it's to avoid actually trying to do that work of building collective organization and building uh, solidarity. Um, so it's just a, it's a, yeah. Well, I think it's a fake sense of, it's a false sense of security uh, and it's a false sense of struggle. I mean, the only real firepower that the working class has is, as you said, organization. Organization is working class firepower. Um, and uh, it comes through um, the issue, fighting around the issues that working people are affected by, you know? Uh, and so for us, community uh, defense um, in, in the African-American and Latino and even in poor working class white communities means stopping the uh, wanton uh, of violence uh, inflicted by the police departments on our young people. Bringing it to an end, you know what I'm saying? That's really important. But how do you do that? You elect civilian control boards, you know, where these cases are reviewed and adjudicated. That's really important. Uh, community defense means providing jobs. It means providing uh, uh, textbooks in schools, you know. It means providing health care. Uh, it means rebuilding uh, uh, bridges. It means reparations. Um, that, 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 it means addressing the drug crisis, the opioid uh, crisis, you know? So, uh, I mean, th those, are all, those are all necessary things. Obviously, that's the, you can't fix the violence without fixing those. But at the same time, there are also more acute and kind of immediate violent provocations. Um, you know, as, as workers have learned on the picket line, you know, over and over again, as, as people of color have learned in, in communities. Um, so it's not just the, the kind of ongoing institutionalized systemic violence. It also has these acute flare-ups where a bunch of, um, I don't know, uh, terrorists, thugs, strike breakers, whatever, show up in your uh, get in your face. So how do you how do you respond to that? Well, I think you respond to it by the same way the civil rights movement responded to it. You know, by again organizing large groups of people in a militant um, uh, struggle uh, in in sit-ins and in, in occupations and in, in demonstrations and in, uh, marches. Uh, in, 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 in taking action uh, along uh, uh, with uh, their white and Latino, Asian brothers and sisters to isolate the uh, right wing. You know, um, the idea that uh, uh, you're gonna get into an armed confrontation in the middle of, of a demonstration is to my point of view, uh, pretty much as false as thinking that uh, when somebody invades your home uh, in an, with, with arms that you're immediately going to be able to, you know, fight them off. You know, that happens sometimes, but it's and very, even, very even crazier than that in a sense, because in your home, you know, it's, it's a much more controlled environment, whereas in a demonstration, you're surrounded by, you know, um, huge crowds of people and it quickly it can 
Yeah, it, I mean, what you're saying reminds me of, of one of the big lessons that, you know, that I, I learned as a, a teacher, which is that, like, what they call classroom management, like, keeping things in order and moving forward in the classroom um, has to start a long time before class starts. Like, you have to plan, you have to develop an environment where things don't come up. You have to... Um, set up your classroom in the right way. If you, if you just wait until a, a problem arises to deal with it, then you've already lost. Right. You've already lost control of the situation. I, I think that that's very, very, very true. And, um, and so, you know, and the, the, here's the important thing, Scott. Uh, history has shown many times that when you organize uh, the people uh, in a big way, uh, you can push these racist and fascist minded individuals back to the fringes, you know? You remember that uh, in the deep South, you know, when Dr. King was speaking and some of these places were surrounded by racist mobs, you know? Yep. They haven't been able to do that, you know? Well, I remember you, you telling a story as well about um... Uh, it was your grandmother, right, who was organizing a concert by Paul Robeson. Right. Uh, and there were threats of, of violence against it. And, you know, because of the strength of her connections to the community and everything, she was able to ensure that it went forward. In fact, under the protection of the police, correct? Well, what happened actually was that they asked the police department, Paul's life had been threatened, and they asked the police to come in to protect Paul. Uh, and that's what working class people do. And the police chief refused. So um, the guys in the mill and the steel mill, right. yeah. and NAACP and, and others, they had a sportsman's club, you know, with a hunter's club. So they got everybody together and uh, they went down to the bus station um, and they brought their equipment with them. And they walked into the bus station and got Paul off the bus and brought him out. When they came out, the entire station was surrounded by the police. <laughs> Chief Allen, his name was Allen. He became a big right-wing politician in California. He left oh. uh, anti-choice activist, uh, by the way. Uh, and they followed them to the church, which was in the suburb of Youngstown Camel. Paul sang and uh, uh, the concert proceeded without incident. And that's what I mean when I say in my article that workers will decide on the spot, you know, how to handle these kinds of situations. They're, they're experienced of people, they know the stakes and, uh, and, and so on. But they have also uh, uh, proven time, time and again, it is really, really important not to respond in kind to provocations, you know, you need yeah. to find out what's happening and you respond accordingly in a smart uh, and it was, way. That's the point that Engels made in uh, 1895, I think. He talked about, he was um, reflecting on Marx's writings on the Paris Commune and uh, the events of 1848 and, and saying that, you know, this idea of revol the primary form of revolution being a war on the barricades in the streets is no longer accurate. Um, uh, partially because um, in, in, in Paris in particular, the, the ruling class had re, rebuilt the city so that the streets were no longer narrow and favorable to kind of guerrilla tactics. They were these huge wide open avenues where you could, the military could station cannons and everything. Engels' broader point was um, that right now the ruling class is trying to trap workers into a situation where they will be slaughtered. Um, and here's the main thing. The bigger the movement, the broader the movement, the more ties it has. Uh, when you build a labor community alliance around a strike, you know, or you, uh, if you build an African-American Latino labor alliance uh, around the fight against police violence, the bigger it, it is, the broader it is, the deeper it is, the more people who are involved the less likely it is that the, because you know, these fascist minded people, they're cowards. They, they really are. They're cowards, you know, 
And so they're not going to step to uh, a situation where, you know, you have that kind of working class and, and community of power. They're going to back up. You know that funny church movement out Westboro there? Westboro Baptist, yeah. Huh? The Westboro Baptist, the uh, yeah. anti-gay, yeah. yeah. And you know how the, the motorcycle gangs responded to them yeah. surrounding the place? And even, even a lot of, of, of very, very conservative right-wingers on the grounds of, of you know, honoring the memory of veterans mobilized against the... We're the, not having that kind of foolishness, you know? And so that's where real security and safety and militants uh, finds itself. And that's what we stand, stand for. Brothers and sisters, comrades, you've been watching this week with the uh, Communist Party. We got a big struggle ahead. And it is, you know, central to defeating these kinds of provocations is defeating the extreme right in the uh, elections. It's not going to happen without it. It won't end it completely, but it can push it back. Uh, and that has to be accompanied by bringing all of the measures to, to bear to drive these forces out of the corporations, out of the police departments, out of the securities, because that's where they're, you know, getting there. And, and as we do this, it's, it's important to remember that, that um, the sort of the way an organization is, is set up and works is related to the kind of people who are in it. So when you're driving out these fascist minded and, and right wing forces, um, you're also changing the way organizations operate, um, or at least yeah. the stage uh, to do so. It's not just, you know, let's get the bad apples out. It, getting the bad apples out changes, you know, the whole batch and what kind of barrel it's in. And how do you do that with unity? Unity trumps the haters, you know? It always did and it always will. Thanks for uh, uh, watching uh, this week. We'll be back uh, next Friday. Please check us uh, out our website at uh, cpusa.org. Uh, uh, we got a number of, we got a new Marxist IQ out on the science of society. We got a new um, edition of our international notes. Uh, elections are coming up in Portugal and the Communist Party of Portugal is very involved uh, in that. Uh, and so um, uh, and let us know what you think, you know, talk to us. We'll get back with you. Scott. Have a good weekend, Joe. Take care. Say hi to that beautiful daughter of yours. Will do. All right. Talk to you later.